Hello everyone, my name is Felipe Pina, but some of you may know me as the father of modern clinical psychiatry. For those of you that do not know why I may be referred to as such, I will inform you while also answering some other questions people have asked of me. Some of these questions are but not limited to why did I believe the mentally ill shouldn't be in chains and treated like prisoners in asylums? How did my efforts to change the treatment of the mentally ill impact modern treatment that can be seen today? And how did I pioneer the concept of human treatment of the mentally ill? To start off, I was born in 1745 into a prosperous family in the French township of Jeanniquier in the Tarn department of Southern France. I come from a family of physicians who impacted my personality and how I was raised. I am the eldest of seven children. My father was a surgeon and my mother came from a family of, uh, of apoth apothecaries, sorry, and surgeons. I was educated by my own mother and a schoolmaster. However, my mother passed suddenly when I was 15 and I was troubled with great grief. My schoolmaster recommended I be sent away to get a new environment and this might benefit me. I completed high school in a new environment and enrolled at Lavar's College Le Closon, which I continued my study in humanities. I was a generally shy and open-hearted man, which led others to believe I was a great candidate for priesthood. By the time I was 22 in 1767, I convinced myself this was my path and moved to the city of Toulouse, where I studied theology with the intent of becoming a priest. At Toulouse, I was exposed to the Enlightenment thinking ways. Here, my mind was changed and I decided to follow in my father's path, studying medicine and abandoning theology. In 1773, I received my doctorate from Toulouse, where after I moved to Montpellier, where I lived for a couple years. While there, I focused on finishing my practical education in hospitals and while doing this, I was able to support myself and make a living by becoming a medical writer and edi an editor on behalf of wealthy students. I also taught mathematics as the subject interested me greatly. I was good at my job and even got the first two academic papers I wrote published in 1777. I then moved to Paris, hoping to practice medicine only to be rejected because my degree was from a provincial university. This was fine, as I was making a modest living already in Paris, still doing medical writing and tutoring mathematics. Things began looking up for me as I made a close friend in Paris and I was appointed editor of Gazette de Sante, a health journal. However, in 1784, this close friend of mine fell mentally ill and although I had tried to help him, I had limited knowledge of how to do so. Eventually, my dear friend took his own life. And this tragedy prompted me to seek out mental illness and learn more about it. I read literature and even consulted with people who called themselves experts, but yet none of the information I received or read was useful, except for the work of Joseph, Joseph de Queen. I sought out de Queen and thus we became very close. De Queen had a different insight on mental illness, one that I could get behind. He believed that mental illness was a natural phenomenon and was not an abnormality, abnormality like the other literature would say, or should be treated as such. He wished to see mental illness treated by the methods of natural science. The Queen dedicated his second edition of his book to me, Philosophy of Madness. I took up the advantage of my position at the Gazette and wrote influential articles on mental illnesses. While doing so, I was able to become employed at a private asylum where I took the time to study mental illness and death. Upon seeing this asylum, which had been an institution since 1660, I witnessed the treatment of the inmates there. They were chained up, guarded, or in a bloodletting. This troubled me greatly as I thought of my friend and if he were to be in these conditions. I sought to change this, and after a time, I was appointed director of the asylum. Bicetre Asylum in 1793. And at this time, the French Revolution was also taking place. 
This revolution helped my career forward as I was also appointed senior physician at the Bicetra Hospital. Now, I believe I received this position because of hard work and dedication, but there are rumors who have not been proven true that the prior physician at the time was beheaded at the same beheaded at the same behead service as the king at the time, which I was there for. I am known for being the figure to free the patients from Bicetre from their restraint chains. I did so carefully freeing the first patient, an English soldier, from his chains. The man once released was nonviolent, and after treatment and proper care was able to assist me in caring for the other patients. So he was no longer violent after I took him out of his chains, so why was he in the chains to begin with? All the patients I assisted and cared for were documented and their care was recorded in books so I could keep progress with their mental health. I continued to remove, remove chains from patients and they were all nonviolent upon removal. After further un understanding the treatments for the mentally ill and how to take care of them, I was able to found psychiatry and use it as a scientific discipline when approaching mental illness. Mental illness, in my own belief, is a result of a large amount of exposure to social and psychological stresses, and in some measure, of heredity and physiological damage. I was able to distinguish certain symptoms of mental illnesses, such as hallucinations, withdrawal, and more. I made sure my approach to the mind and medicine were not one of violence and one of humane treatments. Some of the changes I made were to abandon bloodletting as I found no clinical evidence that it helped the patients at all. Bloodletting is when you cut a patient to relieve vascular conjection. In my book, I wrote a treatise on insanity. I forsake bloodletting. In addition to removing chains and stopping bloodletting, I terminated harsh treatments toward patients like spinning them in a chair or tranquilizing them. I became responsible for innovating new treatments for the mentally ill. I segregated the patients from other patients based on their type of mental disorder and also encouraged that they were cleaned, received therapy through close and friendly contact with the patient, discussion of personal difficulties and a program of purposeful activities. I found that I favored this type of therapy and such the concept of moral treatment was born. This was one of my biggest contributions. I developed this treatment as a type of psychological therapy that involved kindness, care, and a pleasant approach to the mentally ill. I kept a careful record of the cases I treated and was able to provide an accurate and detailed record of cure rates of my patients. Under my leadership, I was able to decrease the number of patient deaths by a large sum and increase the number of patients cured and released. My great success led me to becoming the director of La Salpetriere, one of the largest asylums in Europe. Using the same procedures and tactics, I was able to approach and treat the patients there and had equal success. I also created better settings for these patients, placing them in a general hospital setting rather than an asylum. Mental illness was a new topic still and being one of the first to really study it and pioneer it led others to do the same. Honorable mentions being William Took, who created the York Retreat, a place for patients to receive humane treatment, respect, and restoration, and also Vincenzo Chayarugi, who introduced a vision of modern humanism for dealing with mental illness. So, as you can see, I spent my time dedicated to making a change and helping the mentally ill. I was able to open a conversation about the treatment of the mentally ill and how to approach one's mental health and that discussion remains open to this day. Unfortunately, in 1826, I caught pneumonia and passed away. My funeral was not only just attended by the most influential people in Europe at the time, but also many of my former patients. It was a hero's funeral. To close, the prior questions will be brought up again and answered. Why did I believe the mentally ill shouldn't be changed and treated like prisoners in asylum? I believe that the mentally ill did not mean they were all violent and deserved to be treated poorly. I believe they deserve the chance to be taken care of and nurtured back to good standing within their mental capacities. How did my efforts change the treatment of the mentally ill and impact modern treatment that can be seen today? I ignored previous theories on mental illness 
and relied on my own observations and trials to be able to guide treatments for the mentally ill? How did I pioneer the concept of human treatment of the mentally ill? Because of my efforts and successes, the need to change treatment of the mentally ill spread worldwide. I am the father of modern clinical psychiatry. I introduced and jump-started discussion of humane treatment for the mentally ill, and I guided the psychological model of mental illness. Thank you.